to go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to uh, call this executive session of the World Science Fiction Society into order. Uh, we're do, going to just review them in like a hot second. Um, my name is Jesse Lip. I use they, them pronouns. Um, my title that I definitely don't have out uh, is mixed chairperson. Can you find this to me in my bag? Um, for those of you who weren't here yesterday, just yes. quick. Uh, introductions of the head table. So on our end, we have Alex Axe, our secretary, they, them. Martin Pine, our parliamentarian, he, him. Warren Buck, uh, the deputy presiding officer, he, him. Thank you. Ira Alexandra, our uh, timekeeper, they, them. And then in the front, we have Chris Hensley, he, him, who is our floor manager. Um, for those of you that were not here yesterday, we got started a little late. And so we were not able to uh, get through everything we had hoped to get through. Um, There's still people coming in, but pretty much close to us. Sorry, I'm getting tech requests. Um, if, if you look at the screen, you can see where we are on the agenda. We got the resolutions D8 and D2. We got the resolutions D1 through D7. D8 and D10, D9 was postponed definitely until, until this morning. Yep. Um, and so we are going to be starting in the executive session and taking up items uh, D11 and D12. Um, I have other announcements that I'm going to first, but yeah. Okay, so before we jump into the exec executive sessions, though, a couple announcements. So. For those that are not aware, I want to make sure that folks know that there were um, at least two people, I believe, who were at the business meeting yesterday who have tested positive for COVID. That's why you may be seeing more masks than you did yesterday. Um, extra masks have been delivered and I believe are sitting back out by the, um, the agenda and sign-in sheets. I believe you all have already been rem reminded to sign in. But just one more time, um, if you have not done so, please make sure to do so at the break. Uh, we are going to be handling um, balloting for the MPC tomorrow on Sunday. Um, so just FYI on that. Um, we have encouraged folks, we have eight folks running for three slots, so we've encouraged folks to um, uh, make a post in the convention discord um, if they would like to, just sort of introducing themselves. So we'd just like to encourage people to go take a look at that. Um, if you have not already done so. Okay, so executive session. If there's anybody who has their own recording devices going, I am going to ask you and, well, insist actually that those um, cease. Um, we are, the live stream is currently not. Call us back in order. It's been three, four minutes since I gave you your one minute warning. Um, so I need everybody to take their seats and to cease conversations and to take their seats. Okay, we are back in order. Okay, so we are now out of executive session. We are back to live streaming with the business meeting reporters. So first of all, I want to say, I meant to say this at the end of executive session, I forgot. Um, for the text that was distributed in the room, um, when we get to the lunch break, if people would uh, bring that text and we'll make a pile on the front so that we can dispose of that. So the actions that were taken in the executive committee was the formation of a committee on investigation. Can you pull up that text? Because we, be we will be publishing the text of the resolution in the public minutes. Because we did run it, like we confirmed that this is something that we are good to publish. Um, to the extent that a lawyer will ever tell you you're good on anything. Um, and that, and per r when r this is um, reporting on the outcome of the executive session in order to be able to do the thing that the executive session decided to do. So the following resolution was passed during the executive session. Resolved that a committee of seven be elected by ballot to investigate the Hugo Award Administrator for Shengdu Worldcon the Shengdu Worldcon Hugo Subcommittee and the chairs of Shengdu Worldcon 
for allegations regarding their conduct in the administration of the 2023 Hebrew Awards, and the committee be instructed to report resolutions regarding its recommendations to the 2025 business meeting. Further resolved that items D11 and D12 on this year's business meeting agenda be referred to said committee. Further resolved that the committee has the power to fill vacancies by appointment. This is a committee that will be elected by ballot. We will use the procedures for MPC balloting in terms of the instant runoff and how we count the votes. So um, I'm going to open up nominations in a minute. Um, any current member of WISFIS is eligible to be nominated. Um, if you are in the room, you will need to indicate your assent to nomination. Generally, that's done by not saying that you object to it. Um, for those not in the room, they will need to submit written consent to nomination to business meeting at glasgow2024.org by 5 p.m. BST today. It would be helpful if those emails included your membership number so that if necessary, we can confirm with this membership. Um, and then we will do the balloting of the committee um, tomorrow along with the balloting for the MPC committee. Um, I do want to remind the body that per um, our parliamentary authority, the members elected to a committee on investigation should be folks who are known to have good character and judgment by the body. Uh -oh. <laughs> I would also encourage you all to consider what sorts of perspectives and roles um, and expertises you might want to have on this committee, including, say, lawyers. We, there was, you know, conversations about perhaps people who speak Chinese. There are lots of different kinds of expertises that you might want to consider. So I'm just going to let the body know that they might want to think about that. And so um, with that, um, is there anyone wishing to nominate someone for the committee? And I am going to let people, for the sake of time, just say their name and who they're nominating, and I will restate it. Terry Ash nominating Terry Carney. Terry Ash nominating Terry Carney. Are they in the room? Okay. Kate Secor nominating Ingvar. Kate Secor nominating Ingvar? Is, yes, okay. Um, Chuck Service nominating Warren Buck. Well, that takes care of You can stay standing if you have. Good answer. Wow. Okay. Andrew Adams nominating Elspeth Tonybaugh. Nope. Elspeth, are you saying yes or no? Yes. Okay. I'm just going to read all of these out at the end, to be clear. Um, James. James Bacon nominating Randall Shepard. Okay. It's Jeremy Dashoff nominating Todd Dashoff. I, I do apologize for folks on the live stream. I know that this is all off mic. I will be restating all of these once we have them. I 
would accept. <coughs> okay, you do accept? Yes. Okay, in fact. Uh, James Langworth is not named Sorry, what was the last, your last name? I will be re I will be reading all of these out and we'll make sure that we have all the names that we have. Wait, I am going to nominate uh, Chris Garcia because I already got that consent for nomination, so I'm assuming that means he wants to be nominated. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and read off what I have now. Um, that doesn't mean nominations are closed, but we have enough. I want to make sure that we know who we have. So, so far we have Terry Harney, Ingvar, Warren Buff, Chris Barkley, Elspeth Kobar. I will go slower. I realize there's a caption and probably wasn't keeping up with that. Dr. Science, Randall Shepard, is Randy is in the <coughs> room, okay, and you can send it, okay. Yep. Uh, Todd Dashoff, Chuck Surface, Jason Sanford, is Jason in the room? He's not. Okay, so uh, uh, just make sure that you let him know that you nominated him and to submit that. Um, Cliff Dunn, Farah Mendelson. Nicholas White, who is not in the room currently, Chris Garcia, who's not but has already consented, and Alan Bond, who's not in the room currently. Are there any other nominations? Hearing the nominations are closed, um, and we will prepare these ballots um, and have them available tomorrow. Um, as stated in the agenda, the plan is for the head table staff with possibly a few other volunteers who are used to hand counting these ballots during the meeting to act as the tellers, except for those members of the head table who are nominees. Um, and that would be the plan who will act as the tellers for this election. Okay. We're going to move on. Okay, the next item before us, having been postponed from yesterday, is D9, the business meeting study group, which is on page 16 or thereabouts, 17 of the agenda. So for those of you who were not here yesterday, we are aware that the numbers on the table of contents, there was a slight pagination issue, and they may be off by one in either direction. So if I give a number, I'm trying to give the number that it's actually on, but if I, it's not, it's within one page of that. Um, so D.9, the business meeting study group, I'm going to recommend a debate time of, where's my spreadsheet? Yes, there's a spreadsheet. I know you're shocked. Um, I'm going to recommend a debate time of six minutes for this. Is there any objection to six minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at six minutes. Um, I know you told me whether Farah or Colin wanted to speak first, but I don't remember. Okay, Colin. I'll recognize Colin as one of the makers of the motions, makers of the motion to speak. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Colin Harris, he, him. We do, the World Con has made a lot of progress in recent years in openness, transparency, participation. We've done that with our membership. We have done that with our programming. It is now time to do that with our governance. Um, we need to recognize that we have suffered in our governance in recent years, but whilst we in the room, who are not typical of the other 5,000, <laughs> understand how all of this works, and while we, in some cases, may feel that we enjoy LARPing business meeting um, rules as part of our convention experience, that is not necessarily the way in which we should be governing a, a society of this amount of history, of this amount of impact. We have not come here with specific recommendations, because, even though there were some things as individuals we thought would be great to change. Because the way in which things like the choice of Roberts, um, how to involve the wider body, whether online participation is a good idea, 
These things all interact with each other. And there are other motions coming up later, such as popular ratification, that also interact with those same questions. It is not helpful to have dueling resolutions that just pick away bits of the problem, such as having 7-9 added last year and taken out this year. It is time for us to actually step back and ask what is the best way for us to govern ourselves in a way that is efficient, that avoids the need for 20 hours of business meeting, that enables everyone who wants to to participate, and that recognises you know, the fact that we are a global event, and the ability to sit in a room for this many hours should not be seen as, well, these are the only people who care enough to contribute, or who should have a voice. We really need to be better than that. Thank you. That was the speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Seeing none, is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Uh, I, I'm in favor of the resolution. I come to propose either, as the chairperson directs me, would be prudent on a parliamentary basis, either further instructions for this body or um, replacement instructions. And I'm sorry that I've scribbled this down too late for the secretary to have put it uh, in the text that you all can read. So I hope you will bear with me as I read fairly long document. Resolved, uh, this was originally of a resolution, that the chair shall convene a committee on the governance of WISFIS. Such committee shall consider and report to the 2025 business meeting possible ways to restructure and improve the governance of WISFIS, including without limitation the provisions of the WISFIS Constitution, the standing rules of the WISFIS business meeting, the administration of site selection and voting, and the administration of the Hugo Awards. The committee is directed to seek ways to allow greater participation in the governance of WISFIS by members of WISFIS who do not attend the WISFIS business meeting. Without limitation, the committee may consider proposals to create one or more new legal entities uh, allowing for some functions of WISPIS governance to be handled by a representative body and or providing that some decisions regarding the governance of WISPIS be made by via mail, electronic, or similar asynchronous voting by the members of WISPIS. The committee is strongly encouraged to provide details regarding implementation of proposals it makes and rules governing transition from the current system of WISPIS governance. That's I don't know if it needs a second, but thank you. Um, I, I, I will say I envision this as somewhat broader than the original concept of D9, and indeed I suspect and hope that some of the items we will consider later in the agenda would be appropriately referred to this body, including some of the questions about how Hugo's are administrator, uh, administered. So I, I ask for the chair and the parliamentarian's assistance in turning this into something that is helpful. So it seems like this is either an amendment by substitution or an amendment to add sort of everything after the, I think should be formed, to uh, create additional instructions. I'm going to ask the maker, so I, I can't tell you what your feelings are. I, I would be satisfied with either of those situations. Okay. So I, I am going to say that should we get a second on this, I know there was one, but we haven't actually decided what it is yet, um, I am going to be asking consent of the body to um, wait to handle this until after the lunch break so that we can have this typed up. Um, that doesn't mean that you all have to agree to that, but I just want to let you give you a heads up on that. I, I will not be here after lunch break, and that's fine. You can still do that. Okay. The maker of the motion won't be here after the lunch break is what he just said. And I think Colin is saying he won't be either. Okay, so like I said, you don't have to do that, but I just want to give you a heads up. Okay, so let me consult my parliamentarian and deputy presiding officer.
Okay, so it is the sense of the head table that um, we are not able to decide for you whether it is an amendment by substitution or additional instructions, and we do need you to tell us what I, I move that these be added as additional instructions. Okay. Okay, so this is a motion to amend by adding additional instructions to the committee, which are being typed up once we know what that word is. When I get the text on the slide, it should be considered as it should be considered as essentially additional language to the scope of the study group that would that would I believe I believe it will follow item three. I can cross check that once I have the text in front of me. Amendment 
should be allowed to speak. That is debate and is not a point of inquiry. Do you have a privileged question? Uh, at this time, we have 67 total seconds remaining. Did you say you wish to make a motion about the amendment or about the postponement? That would not be in order as the item before us right now is the postponement. I had asked if there was anybody else wishing to speak on the postponement. Nobody stood, and I said that we are ready to move to a vote. So we are now going to vote on the postponement of the amendment and the underlying resolution to not be taken up before we get back from lunch. All those in favor of the postponement, please raise the hand. All those opposed, and it does not pass, the item is not postponed. We are now back to the amendment by Mr. Pomerantz, which is up on the screen. I believe that the last thing we had was a speech in favor of the amendment from Mr. Pomerantz. Is there anyone wishing to speak against the amendment? Eric, I'm sorry? Part of inquiry? To make sure, was this rule an amendment by substitution or just a regular amendment to add? It was an amendment to add. To the yards back here. And if we disagree with that decision, is there a way to disagree with that decision? No, because the, the maker of the motion did clarify that he was wanting to have it be an addition. Okay. So that, that is the form that the amendment was made in. Okay. Um, I recognized Garrett for a speech against. Eric uh, Mixed Chairperson, while we are grateful for the input on this, we very specifically limited the scope of the committee because we find that committees have very, very large scope, never deliver on anything. We have limited our scope to a very specific area to ensure we actually come back with recommendations. I would also note there's already a committee looking at the Yugos. That was the speech against. I'm going to ask the timekeeper how we're doing. I need a moment. Okay. Do we have enough time that I can recognize another speech in favor? I think speech in favor is what we're close to Okay. So I, I do not think so. Okay. Do your math. Yeah. Okay. Apologies, everyone. We're going to take a brief pause while we figure out where we are on time. I understand the irony of this, but the reality is the way we do timekeeping is complicated. Is it in order to call the question? It would be in order to call the question. Wait, uh... That's true. I forget that that's the rule that we have. Yes. It has been moved to suspend. It has been moved to suspend the rules and call the question. I will remind the body that calling the question does not just and debate, it also ends the making of additional amendments. That is part of what calling the question does, just, just so that we're all clear on that. Uh, my apologies. Yes? yes. So are we calling? Cliff Dunn, he, him. Are we calling the question on the, um, we're just calling the question on the amendment up here, not on the whole thing, right? Yes, yes. Correct. Because I believe it is not yet in order to call the question on the underlying resolution. So, the motion to suspend the rules requires a two-thirds vote and is neither debatable nor amendable. The motion to call the question it requires a two-thirds vote and is neither debatable nor amendable. Therefore, unless somebody objects, I'm going to just take one vote. If we get a two-thirds vote, that will be both the suspension and the ending of debate. Is there any objection? Hearing none. All those in favor of suspending the rules and calling the question, please raise the hand. Thank you. All opposed? 
and the motion passes and the question has been called on the amendment. This is the addition of the text that is on the screen to the instructions of the remit of the D.9 study group. All those in favor of this amendment, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Thank you. And the amendment does not pass. The item before us is now D.9 as it was originally presented. I believe the last thing we had was I recognized the speech against, which became an amendment. So is there a speech in? I'm actually going to ask for a speech against. Seeing none, is there a speech in favor? Apparently, I think we are actually out of time for speech in favor. Okay, no, we are out of time. Yeah, we're out of time for speech. Sorry, I forgot that I had asked you for time. Yeah. <laughs> it was like a whole minute ago. Um, okay, so we are out of time for speeches in favor. Do we have time remaining for speeches against? Um, I believe we have 58 seconds. Okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? No, it's sure I move to call the question. Calling the question is not in order because we have not had a speech against. If nobody wishes to have a speech against, we will just move to a vote. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Speak against. Seeing none, we will move to a vote. The item currently before us is item D.9 on page 17, the creation of the business meeting study group. All those in favor, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those opposed? Thank you. As is, uh, my remit is chair, since the specifics of the formation of the committee was not specified in the motion, I am going to appoint Colin and Farah to serve as chairs, assuming they consent. They are both nodding and they consent. Anyone wishing to uh, be included in this committee should give their information to the secretary. If you are going to be at tomorrow's meeting, you should come to tomorrow's meeting with your name, email, and the, and the name of the committee written on a piece of paper that you can give to the secretary. If you are not going to be at tomorrow's meeting, you should email business meeting at. The thing you should not do is immediately when we hit a break or a recess, all bombard the secretary at once demanding that, you, that they take your information now. Okay? So we're not going to do that again. Thank you. So anybody wishing to be on that committee, we will get that information and we will pass that along to the chairs. The next item before us is item D.13, the apology resolution. I am recommending a debate time. Yes. Okay, we're going to give the secretary time to catch up. he, him, makes chairperson. I move that this item is out of order because if not on the face of it, in substance, it, con it contains allegations of improper and unconstitutional behavior against identifiable individuals. And therefore, per earlier rulings of the chair and Robert's rules of order, it is not fit for this meeting. Thank you. Um, so I will just note that um, the previous resolutions, we had discussed sort of what is considered proper, but no actual ruling had, was made on them because they referred to committee. I just want to clarify that for the body. This resolution is um, complicated. I do agree that it is, a, it is an edge case. And therefore, I'm going to use my prerogative in Robert's rules to actually put the question to the body. Um, I, I am not sure whether this should be considered in order or if it should be considered out of order because um, 
it is too close to making allegations about specific behavior. So this will be a simple majority vote of the body. A vote in favor will be to sustain the point of order and consider the root, and therefore if, if the, sorry, if the ayes have it, the resolution will be considered out of order and will no longer be before us. If the nays have it, the resolution will be considered to be in order and we will proceed accordingly. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Approval of motion to amend. There is no there is no motion to amend in order right now. Okay. So the question before us is whether or not to sustain the point of order. All those in favor of sustaining the point of order, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? And you're going to say that the no's have it. Okay, and the motion is in order. So the what is before us? Yes. Uh, Mr. Rosenbaum, he's like he am. Uh, the next to last paragraph of this resolution concerns making certain nominees finalists and is redundant with D14, which does the same thing. And I have consulted with Cliff Dunn, because I believe the meeting this motion hasn't actually been stated and isn't actually before the body. Uh, he's uh, happy with removing the penultimate paragraph of this concerning that. So that this question of making items finalists will only come before the body once as part of D14, and not both as one paragraph of D13, and then again as D14. Okay, um, so, while well, I understand that Mr. Eeks like, believes that the motions has not, has not been stated, it is my understanding, based on the way we do things, that because the text of the body has been provided to everyone, it is now considered to be in the hands of the body. So. I'm going to ask the body, is there any objection to striking the penultimate paragraph of D.13, which is, in essence, also handled in D.14, so that we are only handling this question in one resolution? Is there any objection? There is an objection. Okay. Is there a move to suspend the rules to do that? So moved. So moved. I hear a second. Okay. The motion to suspend the rules is neither debatable nor amendable. All those in favor of striking, uh, of suspending the rules so that we can strike the penultimate paragraph of D.13 and only handle the question in D.14. Do you have a question? Yes. Marie Schieber, I think we would need to strike the penultimate and the ultimate paragraph. Correct. That we will call that an editorial revision. Yes. Okay. All those in favor of striking the penultimate and ultimate paragraph of D.13, so that the matter is only handled in D.14, suspending the rules to do that, and then that would also do that. All those in favor, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against. And the motion passes. So the rules have been suspended and that has been done. So the last two paragraphs of D.13 have been struck. And D.13 is now before us. I, is, do you have a privileged question? Okay, this can go to microphone. Jack Boyd, he can, would it be in order to refer this to the committee that we established uh, earlier today? It would be, but that's not the purpose I recommended before, so you would need to wait for that. I, I understand. Okay. Um, I think it's okay. Okay, yeah. Okay, I was going to set a debate time of eight minutes, given the debate that's already expired. I'm going to recommend a total debate time of six minutes. Is there any objection to six minutes? Hearing none, debate time is set at six minutes. I will now recognize the maker of the motion for a speech in favor. Mr. Chair, Cliff Dunn, he, him. I move to refer this to the committee we created earlier. Okay. The motion to refer to committee, uh, to the, I'm assuming the committee on investigation. We have to create yes. several. Okay. The motion to refer to the committee on investigation has been moved and seconded. 
Uh, do you wish to speak to it? You don't have to, but since you're walking back. Okay, the uh, maker does not feel the need to speak in favor. Is there anybody else wishing to speak in favor? Is there anybody wishing to speak against? Since you're here, do you consent to nomination for the Committee on Investigation, Mr. White? Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, Nicholas White, he him also, incidentally, this year's Swiss was Division Head and Hugo Administrator. Um, Mr. Chairperson, there's been a, a lot of debate already on all of these issues today, and I apologize, I wasn't present for very much of it. I think people are going to give us very funny looks if we do not say something definitive coming out of this meeting about what happened last year. I think there is no doubt that Hirsch was caused to the finalists who were disqualified without explanation. There is no doubt that Hirsch was caused to all of us who care about the Hugos. And I think this meeting needs to at least say something. I, I'm sorry. Story. It took me a second to parse. I am going to have to say that the statement about why or why not people were disqualified was out of order. Okay. As I say, I think apologizing for purpose and cause is something that we, we can do and something that I think we should do. So please, let's not fudge this one to the committee. Let's just, it doesn't need much debate. We know what the right thing to do is, let's just do it. Okay, that was the speech against. Do you have a question or a speech? Speech. Okay, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Okay, is there anybody else wishing to speak against? Maren Michaud, um, she, they. I definitely think there has been harm, and I definitely think we should not wait another year before we offer at minimum an apology. And it is very possible, I believe, to offer amendments so that we retain the apology and lose the details that are at issue here. That was a speech against. Is there anybody wishing to speak in favor? This is on the motion to refer to the Committee on Investigation. Okay. Is there anybody wishing to speak against? I just want to clarify, I don't see anybody wanting to speak, so you're going to move to a vote. All those in favor of removing, uh, removing, referring uh, D.13 to the Committee on Investigation, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? The motion does not, does not pass and the, the Mm. And the resolution is not referred. And so we are back to the resolution that is before us, which is D13 with the last two paragraphs struck. Is there anybody wishing to speak against? Jerry Sullivan, she, her. Um, I am particularly, I, I believe we all have our narratives. We've had a lot of discussion. I do not have a, you know, I do not hold with the, what seems to be the common narrative. I'm particularly concerned about the statement about the unknown and unquantifiable numbers of ballots that were supposedly, we believe, or that other people believe were removed um, because of um, slave voting, alleged slave voting. I personally have not seen the evidence and I've read a great deal. So I, as this stands, I'm, I can't vote, I, I encourage people not to vote in favor of, of apologizing for something that we don't have proof of. That was a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Yes. On either side. So if, if you're wanting to make an amendment, I was recognizing you thinking that you were wanting to make a speech, so that would be in order now. So I may now make an amendment? You may now make an amendment. You need a microphone, yep. Marani show, she, them. I move that we amend it uh, to retain the apology, uh, but to delete the details. Uh, as uh, I believe I sent the text to the secretary earlier, uh, although you would need to delete the last two paragraphs since the previous change. Okay. That was said to business meeting at at 9.51 a.m. Can you give us one moment? Do you want to
I'm going to ask, I, I need to be able to hear the people up here. The issue is that if we pull the cord without the remote, we can't get it back up on the screen. And the remote has gone missing. Yeah. Okay, here's the thing. It is 12.03 p.m. I am getting the sense that even if we are able to move through this in a timely fashion, we are not going to finish it um, before the lunch break. So my recommendation is going to be that we go ahead and move to the lunch break. We'll, we will resume the lunch break with the text of the motion on the screen. We have 45 minutes. We can get that done. Oh, yeah. um, and then we will, your motion hasn't seconded yet, so we will essentially resume from the lunch break with seeing if there is a second for your amendment. We are going to be in recess until 12.48. We're going to be back in order, 12.49, and we are back from recess. Before we get started, you may have noticed a change in the head table. Um, I have permission to share this. Alex asked the secretary is tested positive for COVID. Oh. So they are returning back to their apartment. They are planning on following on the live stream and continuing to take notes. But in the interim, this person who's maybe been secretary a few times before is agreed to help us out. So our profuse thanks to Linda Denneroff for being the emergency holographic secretary. She, uh, she thought she was getting a year off from this, but I guess not. Okay, so. Previously on the business meeting, we were on D.13 apology and a uh, amendment by substitution had been made. We have the text of that on the screen. Um, it had not yet received a second. It has been seconded. I'm going to read um, the text as well. Um, and then once I am done reading it, we are probably going to keep it on the second resolution slide. Um, and hang back to the whereas slide if it sort of seems relevant. Um, this is also truncated slightly for font sizes. So where it says works and writers, um, those are essentially the same lists that you will find in the original document. Um, okay, so whereas, list of works. We're excluded from the Hugo Award finalist list and Jiren Zhejiao, that was probably wrong, was excluded from the Astounding Award finalist list for the 2023 Shengdu Worldcon for unknown reasons, potentially not rooted in the WISPIS Constitution, and whereas the published nominated statistics included questionable intermediate results, and whereas we find that the 2023 Hugo Award administrators were unacceptably vague in their stated rationale for these actions, and neither they nor the 2023 Shengdu Worldcon administration offered satisfactory explanations of on the discovery of these irregularities. Be it resolved that the World Science Fiction Society apologizes unreservedly to the nominators and voters of the 2023 Hugo Awards for any, fail for any failures in the administration of the 2023 Hugo Awards and the World Science Fiction Society apologizes unreservedly to all nominees, finalists, and winners of the 2023 Hugo Awards for any failures in the administration of the 2023 Hugo Awards, as well as any harm which may result from those actions, and the World Science Fiction Society specifically and unreservedly apologizes to list of writers slash authors slash creators for their exclusion from the 2023 Hugo Award and or Astounding Award final ballots. That is the item before us. Do you wish to speak to it? 
Uh, this is an amendment, and so by default, it's five minutes of debate time, um, distributed evenly. If there's five total minutes remaining. Okay. Wish to speak to it? Just to reiterate that I believe we must apologize this year, and I hope this is sufficient to remove everyone's concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Elspeth? I have, and I don't know where I'm supposed to be saying this, I have offered an amendment, in fact a replacement, because I know you. So I'm going to take that as a speech against, because you were, you were saying that you have a different amendment that you wish yes. to offer, so that is a speech against this current amendment. You are, to be clear to the body, this other amendment is not yet before us, it was simply a speech against because there is another amendment that the member wishes to offer. Thank you. Is there a speech in favor? Seeing none, is there any more speeches against? I begin, next Chair, with a couple of questions on procedural questions. Kevin Stan, sorry, Kevin Stanley, he, him. Uh, am I correct that terminology-wise, the sections of this, of this proposal and the proposal that is to substitute for the sections that begin with whereas are considered the preamble, the rest is the resolution proper. Yes. That, that is correct. I, I ask this because I wish to. The further question is, this being an amendment by substitution, it is one of the places I believe where we are allowed to make first order amendments to the substitute before considering it in replacement of the original proposal. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, Next chairperson, I move to strike the entire preamble. Okay. Is there a second? Okay. I'll speak to that. I'm going to state it first. Okay. The amendment before us is to strike the entire preamble, which is this slide. So should the motion be adopted, this entire slide would go away, and the entirety of it would be this slide. As the member noticed, this is in order because although we do not normally allow amendments to amendments, when we have an amendment by, amendment by substitution, that is one of the exceptions. The motion has been moved and seconded. Um, we just split the remaining time again. Yep. <laughs> Next chairperson, Kevin Stanley, he, him. Preambles are problematic. Our parliamentary authority actually discourages the use of them. They're not substantive in many ways, but they tend to drive things in a way that you may not want them to be. If we want to apologize, let us just apologize. We don't need to go into why we're apologizing, and we are trample, potentially trampling on areas that we have sent off for discussion or consideration or investigation by other committees, and therefore I think we were better off with simply apologizing. Thank you. That was a speech in favor. Is there a speech against? Seeing none, are there any other speeches in favor? Linda Romanette, Cheever. I agree with Kevin Stanley with the addition of any time you have to explain an apology, you have not apologized. Just flat out apologize. I agree with this amendment to the amendment. Thank you. That was a speech in favor. Are you wishing to? It's a point of something. I wonder if you could display what's being deleted. Okay. Yep. The member was asking to display the text to be deleted that is being displayed. Okay. Is there? Yep. Uh, Ariane Ann, where is she? Her. So if we pass the amend the, the the amendment to the amendment, do the original whereases remain in effect or not? No. The the original whereas so the the if the Stanley amendment passes. The amendment by substitution would become just 
this, this slide. Should this amendment by substitution pass, then we would vote on the adoption, or the other things you decide to do, of that. Should this not pass, then we would be back to the original resolution. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, point, point You want me to explain that again? Um, is there a place where I can substitute my amendment? If there, no, I mean, hold on, once again. There's only one presiding officer here, folks. If you have another amendment that you wish to offer, you can, so if it is, knowing what you are, what the amendment you wish to offer is, it would be in order once the um, amendment by substitution, which is before us, is done with. And so once we are back to the resolution, either as originally submitted or as amended. Thank you. Yes. Are you, do you have a speech in uh, against? No, we might like to speak in favor. Okay. Are there any other speeches against? him while I agree with the general principle that um, preambles um, can cause difficulties I think in this case where the, the wider world outside of fandom is probably somewhat unclear on um, this whole situation um, I think in this case the preambles serve a useful purpose in clarifying what has been apologized for whereas without the preamble um, the statements um, or the, uh, the apology uh, could be taken to be deliberately and unnecessarily vague. Thank you. That was a speech against um, and you have a speech in favor? Okay. But now what's in order is a speech in favor. So is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Just so that everybody knows, um, Give your badge to the secretary before you speak now, not after the secretary new rules. Uh, Rafe Richards, he, him, and Mr. Sutton, to very briefly reply to the previous speaker. The people to whom we are apologizing know very well what we're apologizing for. This is not a resolution to make a public statement to the world at large. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Mark Richards, he, him. While, uh, while I accept um, Mr. Stanley's uh, explanation for why preambles are not desirable, I think in this case it's necessary. We have made in this version, in, we made in this version, it's sufficiently vague, and I think we need this the historical record. Okay, time against the amendment has elapsed. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? How much time is remaining? We have 20 seconds remaining in favor. All up. Lev Rockney, he, him, and uh, I'm bringing a PR perspective to this. I apologize for a living and Having the preamble weakens this. We are not explaining, we are just saying, this is bad, we are sorry for it. The preamble is pointing fingers and saying, 10 seconds, it's their fault. We need, if we are going to apologize, we need to put the apology front and center, no prevarication. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. 
Okay, that is time in favor has also elapsed, so all debate time has expired. Okay, so we are going to move to a vote on the um, amendment to the amendment by substitution, which is to strike the preamble, which is to strike the entire slide that you now see, all of the whereas is, so that the amendment by substitution would read just the be it resolved, the slide that is currently before you. Is that clear? Okay. All those in favor of the Stanley Amendment, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? And the amendment passes. So what is now before us is the amendment by substitution as amended, which is now just this slide. Okay? Are we, we are out of time. Okay. Time on this item has elapsed. So we are going to move to a vote unless there is any privileged item. Parliamentary inquiry. The format of this uh, motion does not match the format of our other resolutions. Uh, can that be fixed in editing? Yeah, that's it. Yes. If the formatting is different, that's an editorial revision and we will make things consistent. Okay. Okay. One moment. Okay. What is. Given that Ms. Stovar said she had an amendment moved to extend debate by two minutes. Okay. It has been moved to extend debate by two minutes. Is there. Second. There is a second. All those in favor of extending debate by two minutes, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? Thank you. It required a two thirds vote and did not pass. Debate is not extended. So we are going to move to a vote on the amendment by substitution, which is to substitute the originally submitted text of D13 with the text that is on the slide. Are we clear on what the item to be voted on is? Yes, the point of inquiry, could you please let me know how many paragraphs after be it resolved or read it either way? Because in the, in the printout it's... Okay, so the text of the printout is no longer, well, currently not relevant. This is an amendment by substitution. So it is to change from the text in the printed out agenda with the text on the screen, which reads, be it resolved that the World Science Fiction Society apologizes unreservedly to the nominators and voters of the 2023 Hugo Awards for any failures in the administration of the 2023 Hugo Awards. And the World Science Fiction Society apologizes unreservedly to all nominees finalists and winners of the 2023 Hugo Awards for any failures in the administration of the 2023 Hugo Awards, as well as any harm which may result from these actions. And the World Science Fiction Society specifically and unreservedly apologizes to, and I will read out this list, R.F. Huang, it's going to be wrong and I'm, a, and I'm sorry, author of Babel, Hongyan Mu Ming Gu, author of Color the World, Hai Ya, author of Hong Kong Temple Pagoda, Neil Gaiman, author and writer for The Sandman, Paul Weimer and Jiran Zhe Zhao for their exclusion from the 2023 Hugo Awards and or Astounding Award final ballots. That is the amendment by substitution that is currently before us. Are we clear? Okay. All those in favor of the amendment by substitution, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? Thank you. The amendment by substitution passes. Is there any debate time on the underlying item remaining? No. Okay. Yes. I will forward you what we have, and it's that minus the last two paragraphs, minus the whereases. Sorry. Linda's not on the business meeting staff email, y'all. Like, cause she wasn't on business meeting staff until recently. Um, yeah, we'll do, okay. Yes. Do you have a privileged item? Yes, Mixed chairman, I move. Mixed chairperson, I move to extend debate by four minutes. Okay, has been moved and seconded to, moved and seconded to extend debate by four minutes. This requires a two thirds vote. All those in favor of extending debate, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? Thank you. And the motion does not pass and debate is not extended. So we are back to the underlying D.13 apology as amended. 
So what we are voting on is the adoption of, oh yeah, okay. Um, what we are voting on is the adoption of D.13 as amended. Are we clear on what is being voted on? Okay. Oh, you're in the PDF. Okay, sorry, Linda's not a Mac person, and I am, and that causes issues. One moment. <coughs> okay, parliamentary inquiry. Next chairperson, um, there she is. That's what I was trying to get. Is it in order, because, even though debate time has expired, is it in order for somebody such as one of the earlier speakers who was foreshadowing an amendment and is standing at the front of the room <laughs> to introduce an amendment to what is pending? Yes, because the question has not been called. Amendments are still in order. They would just not be debatable if there is no debate time. Is there anyone wishing to make a motion? Okay. Thank you, the next chair. Thank you, Martin, who finally figured out what was wrong. Um, I think even as in many cities, it seems like you're about to make a speech. Can you make your amendment first? Yes, ma'am. This and Martin said my only copy. I have it on the screen. You can say you move to amend by substitution with the text on the screen. Move to amend with text on screen. The current is there a second? Hearing none, the item is not before us. Yes. Question is: Has there been debate in the negative on this issue? I don't think so. But we had lunch between then and now, so please correct me if I'm wrong. I do not believe so. So given our standing rules, there's a thing. Let me pull it up. Three five. I'm going to, I'm going to rule first. So, um, <clears throat> for those that don't have the standing rules memorized, they're not sure what's happening right now. What was pointed out was that we have a standing rule about if we get to the, if we run out of debate time before stuff has happened, basically. So rule 3-5 says that if debate time expires before either or both sides of the question, have had an opportunity for substantive debate. Any side that has not had such an opportunity shall have two minutes to be used solely for the purpose of substantive debate. I am not sure, while it is, tr while it is true that there has not been a speech, a thing that is classified as a speech against about the underlying motion, I'm not sure I agree that there has not been substantive debate on the matter. And so I am going to rule I'm going to put it to the body. Do you believe that there has been substantive debate on either or both sides of this resolution? I spoke against it. You spoke against the underlying resolution before there were any amendments. Okay, great. Substantive debate happened. Thank you. That was a long time ago. No, no, no. It's, you know. That's an editorial revision. Okay. So, I, I'm going to summarize where we are because a lot of things just happened. Yeah, okay. So, what happened was an amendment by substitution was offered, but it was not seconded, so it is not before us. Then there were questions on whether or not where we were in debate and whether or not we needed to add time to debate. It has been determined that there was debate on both sides of the question, and therefore, we are going to move to a vote because debate time has expired unless there is anybody else was wishing to make a motion that would be in order. Yes. Do you have an inquiry? 
Uh, no. Mm, excuse me. Can you please bring the mic? Oh, no. In the original language, the, the object apology was to the denominators and the voters. The new language did not include the voters. I'd like to move that the word voters be stuck back in. The word, the nominators and voters is the text in the apology. And so there is no need to amend it to include that. I apologize, I don't see it on the board. Second line. Apologize if unreservedly to the nominators and voters of the 2023 Google Awards. No, that says nominators, finalists, and winners. No. No. The no. second no. line of the first paragraph reads, Apologize as unreservedly to the nominators and voters. I apologize. I was looking in the wrong place. Okay. Apologies to the audience. Okay. We are going to move to a vote unless there is any other item that needs to be addressed. The item that we are voting on is the adoption of D.13 as amended by substitution, the text of which is on the screen. All those in favor, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those opposed, thank you. And the motion passes and is adopted. I'm going to instruct me and the rest of my staff to get this text to um, the folks that run things like wispus.org as well as to Glasgow 2024 promotions. I'm not promising anything about what the cons promotion te promotions team is or is not going to do with it because wispus and the con are different things, but I'm letting you know that I will make sure they have the text so they can choose to distribute it if they wish to. Okay, having handled D.13, we are now going to go on to D.14, make them finalists. I don't have my spreadsheet, I just realized. Um, I'm going to recommend a debate time of eight minutes for this item. Is there any objection to eight minutes? Yes. There is an objection? Okay, so we are going to vote on the debate time of eight minutes. Um, it requires a majority vote. If it doesn't pass, then we get to have Fun with debate times for the first time. <laughs> All those in favor of a debate time of eight minutes, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, and the debate time of eight minutes is adopted. Okay. Um, is one of the makers of the motion here to speak? Yes. Point of order. There's a point of order. Please state your point at the microphone, or have somebody bring a microphone to you. Mixed chairperson, my name is Kent Bloom, and uh, I I would like to move to postpone indefinitely. I do actually. I'd like to raise a point of order first. Uh, I believe that, that it is beyond the authority of this um, body to tell someone that they were or were not uh, a uh, not a nominee, and that if we adopt this, we have done nothing, and if we don't adopt this, we have done nothing, and therefore. It is definitely out of order. Okay, so the point of order is that this is beyond the powers of the business meeting. I will note that the creation of the formalization of long list entries committee, sometimes known as the folly committee, was created purely by a resolution of the business meeting. Okay. Since there's some history here, and I am a member of the Folly Committee, the Folly Committee was created by Bruce Pels as a personal project and has been endorsed repeatedly by this body, but is not a creature of this body. Okay, I take the correction. Is Mr. Eastlake here? You have an amendment that you're planning to offer, correct? Donald no, Eastlake, he, him. Uh, I believe this. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not asking you to make the amendment. I'm just clarifying your plan of making it, right? Because I have a point of order I have to rule on. Yes, and, and I would tweak that point of order <laughs> by saying that this is inconsistent with the Constitution, which specifies who's finalists. And uh, you can't just do something which is, you know, make somebody a finalist when the Constitution specifies how you become a finalist. But you can't just do that by a majority vote at a resolution. Okay. I agree with the point. However, Here's the issue. If I rule it out of order, it's gone, and I'm aware of an amendment that would bring it 
out of that problem. So, give me a second. I'm going to ask the member if he would be willing. Don, can you move so I can see the member? Sorry. Um, I'm going to ask the member if he would be willing to reserve the point of order until after the amendment that Mr. Eastlake plans to offer to be ruled on after that, if still necessary. Okay, the point of order has been reserved. Okay, I'm going to recognize Mr. Eastlake for an amendment. Um, so I have an amendment proposed which would uh, make this uh, all valid. Uh, it's a little bit complicated, so I'm not sure if it maybe needs a suspension of the rules to do this. But what it would do is it would basically split this into two pieces. One is a resolution, basically naming the same works, essentially saying that they ought to be finalists. And the other is an amendment to the Constitution, which would come up the first time, which specifically authorizes the business meeting to make new finalists for the previous year by a two-thirds vote, the same way we do for extending Hugo eligibility. And I have forwarded to the business staff the text of these pieces in advance. So, if, I don't know if they, it's on the screen. Okay. Well, there it is. And uh, so I move this as an amendment by a substitution. Second. Or, in, and if necessary, also move to suspend the rules to allow that as part of the same motion. <laughs> um, okay, so the motion has been moved and seconded. Um, I think we're out of the preliminary business meeting. So I think it's in order we don't need to suspend the rules. Um, nobody's yelling at me that I'm wrong, so I'm going to say that that's okay. Um, okay, so it has been moved and seconded to amend by substitution. So this is two items that we are going to take up together. We are going to consider them to be sort of the same item, um, unless somebody objects to that. So it is an amendment to the WISPIS Constitution that inserts text in 3-4 that reads, the WISPIS business meeting may, by a three-quarters vote, determine that a potential nominee for the Hugo Award or another award administered by WISPIS was improperly declared ineligible and should have been a finalist on the previous year's ballot, and by such a vote, give that potential nominee the status of being a finalist for that previous year. Provided that such three-quarter votes pass at the 2024 and 2025 business meetings shall be effective if this constitutional amendment is passed in 2024 and ratified in 2025. So just to be really clear, what it's saying is constitutional amendments take uh, two years to happen. So it's going to take two years to be in effect, but we can have pre-voted on the resolution to do the thing so that it's immediately in effect if it passes. That resolution is resolved that the following works, the following were properly declared eligible and should have been award finalists in 2023. They are given that status effective upon the ratification of the belated finalist constitutional amendment. And then there is that list, which has been read previously. Do you need me to read the list? I did not hear a yes, so I'm not going to read the full list. That is the item before us that has been moved and seconded. Do we have privileged matters? Uh, point of order. So, uh, mixed chairperson, how exactly will this vote work if there is a single item, given that there is a simple majority on the WISFIS Constitution matter, and there is a three quarters requirement for the resolution? It wouldn't work, is, your, is a good point. Yep, no, thanks. Yeah, so we will vote on, we're gonna, so, Pending whatever happens in the last little bit of time, my, what we would do is, if we were to move to a vote on this right this second, we would vote on the um, adoption of the constitutional amendment, and then if that passes, vote on the adoption of the resolution, because it doesn't seem useful to vote on the resolution if we reject the amendment. Okay, yes? Request for information, if I may. Request for information. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson, um, Ralph Richards, he, him. Um, I am hoping you can clarify my understanding of the Constitution. 
that given that this constitutional amendment, if passed, would need to be re ratified in 2025 and would not take effect until then, and given that the constitutional amendment, as proposed, allows them to reinsert finalists for the previous year only, am I correct in thinking it could not, therefore, reinsert finalists for 2023, which would be two years prior to the coming into force of this constitutional amendment? No, because the proviso is, is handling that. It's saying that the 2024 business meeting is addressing the previous year, which is 2023. And so that if the amendment passes, then that thing that happened in 2024 um, is effective. Thank you very much. That sets my mind at rest. Okay. Okay. Oh. I, I hear a point of order and a point of information. I will recognize the point of order. Dave Wallace, he, him. Uh, the resolution as currently stated there says these works were in, uh, improperly declared eligible. I believe that should read improperly declared ineligible. It says improperly declared ineligible. I may have said eligible, my apologies. The text that I see says improperly declared ineligible. Okay, there was a request for information. The answer is Okay. My question. We're good. Okay. Are there any other privileged matters? Okay. You've been standing. Is it privileged? Okay. I'm uh, not going to see him. Uh, Pardon me for this, Mr. Chairperson, but I was generally of the uh, uh, belief that our Constitution does not allow us to retroactively change our constitutional rules. That was something I have, I have certainly heard ruled at previous meetings that we cannot do, and this strikes me as being at least perilously close to this. Um, I, would defer to the, the expertise of the member making the motion, but I would just like the chair to confirm that they have considered that point before ruling this amendment. Mr. Easley, can you come here? I want to ask a question. Okay. Second officer will admit that they do not have an encyclopedic uh, data bank of every possible constitutional amendment that has ever been proposed. I'm just going to start off by saying that. It is my understanding that when such rulings have been made in the past, they have not included a combination of both this sort of proviso and a incredibly narrow remit. And so therefore I would say that this is in order given those two facts. Okay. Are there any other privileged items? Request for information. Please move to a microphone. Given the way this is structured, given that we have appointed a committee to investigate the UGOs, should, by some chance, additional information regarding what happened in 2023 be developed, would it be permissible, the way this is worded, to further allow additional nominees, non-nominees, whatever you want to call them, to be added to this list, this fine, or this list to be revised if it turned out that there was something else that should have been ahead of this? I would rule that, so that is a ruling that the 2025 chair would need to make at that time. Given that that is presumably me, I, like, no, I'm sorry, I, I cannot make hypothetical rulings about the future, I just can't. I may want to, but I've been down that road before and it's well, a I'm bad idea. Is, does that limit this list? We can never, 
add any other finalists by this proviso? The question is, can we never add any other finalists by this proviso? That this proviso is about the resolution that is passed at the 2024 business meeting. The text has written anything past the 2025 business meeting would need to be about the previous year's ballot, would need to be about the 2024 ballot. So, yeah, the a resolution that is passed this year would be about the 2023 finalists. The text, as it is written, to my understanding, does not include the ability to edit the 23 finalists in 25. And the maker of the motion is nodding, indicating that is also their intention. And he tends to write things that mean what he intends. So, okay, I see multiple speaking cards. Can you just say what are you wanting? Just like point of order, request for information. What do you want? Uh, I want to just. No, I just need the name. Point of order, request for information, or parliamentary inquiry. Do you have a question? The chair. You want to appeal the ruling of the chair? Yes. Okay, then I'm going to take that up. I don't think you can appeal this ruling because it's about it's it's. I'm not ruling on. I see a date on the, cons, the constitutional amendment on what can be. The member is saying that there's not the, the text of the resolution says the previous year's ballot. That a business meeting. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I missed that. Okay. What were you wanting to do? There's a question. What's in the back? That is not a privileged matter. Were there any other privileged motions? What was yours? Okay, a question. We're going to start with this question. Oh, I'm sorry. There's a what was yours? Uh, could the text be a bit bigger? That's a privilege. Uh, maybe we'll try. Okay, question, uh, question for the room. Are we okay losing the list of finalists from the screen? Of the, the list of award, awardees from the screen, because I think we have these. Okay, what is your question? question goes along with the other, but on a future thing. Does this resolution, should the committee find that things were not improperly declared ineligible, would this still be and you know, could we change that toward next year? You know, if the if the investigation committee says no, these were this was properly right. decided. Yeah. So. We, we got ourselves stuck. Right. Because ratification of the item would be up at 25. If there are changes that need to be made to the amendment or to the consequences of the amendment. <coughs> That would, I believe, be an order in 25. I want to be clear. Can't come to me in 25 and say you ruled that this was an order because I didn't issue a ruling in 25. This is my understanding of the parliamentary process. Thank you. Okay. There was a question over there. Kate Sucor, she, her. I know we've covered this, but I'm still confused. So let me lay out the scenario that would answer my question, maybe that off. I am one of the people that was named. This gets passed. Do I get to put I was a finalist on my resume now, or do I have to wait until next year? You would need to wait until next year. Okay. Are there any other privileged questions? Okay. <coughs> Mr. Eagles, did you speak in favor? Do you want to? You didn't. This is an amendment, so it has five minutes, but I don't. Uh, I believe we already counted some speech in favor against the time. Well, yeah, like how much time is remaining on the entire item to be distributed? Um, do we have the full five minutes to distribute? No, I won't do the math on the Okay, we have some, so make your speech. Oh, Donald Eastley Keyham. Uh, this is essentially the only way you can do this, in my opinion, because the Constitution specifies who's finalists, and so you need to change the Constitution to establish this mechanism. 
So if you want to do this, this is the way to do it. Okay, thank you. Is there a speech against? I'm gonna recognize in the back. Lisa Hertel, she, they. I believe if we change the previous year to a previous year, it resolves everything. So I would like to make that a minor amendment, motion, change, whatever. I'm sorry, please say that again. Change the, the phrases the previous year to a previous year. Okay. As we've established, because it's an amendment by substitution, an amendment is in order. So the amendment is to change the word the previous year to a previous year. So just strike the and insert a um, before right there. Okay, is there a second? I do not hear a second. So the, okay, there is a second. Okay, so the I, so what is before us is an amendment to the amendment by substitution change it from a finalist on the previous year's ballot to a finalist on a previous year's ballot. I'm going to assume this is the member left. They don't wish to say anything additional about their amendment. Okay. We had... The, the point of inquiry was that we're on the constitutional part of it, and we are. Okay, thank you. So, I believe we have roughly like a minute 50 in total to distribute amongst the two sides of this amendment. Okay. Is there a speech against? Carry on. Carry she, her. Well, I agree that that would solve one problem. That leaves it open-ended like we could go back to 1947 and say we didn't like those. And I don't think we should open that up. Okay, thank you. That was a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? <laughs> Elspeth Kobler, she, her. I think this is a very bad reason for amending the Constitution. I think you're being, you're reacting emotionally. I don't know Okay. Wrong time. I thought we were still talking about the which is part of it. Okay. This is speech in favor. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is there a speech in favor? Well, I agree with the previous speaker. Uh, we can fix that by requiring two successive business meetings in order to do this. Okay, I have a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Madam, excuse me, mixed chairperson. Uh, my name is Kent Bloom, and I am very much opposed to revisionist histories of any kind, and particularly open-ended ones. There are plenty of controversies in the history of the Hugo Awards, going back to 1955, where it is alleged that the committee substituted their judgment for the judgment of the voters. Um, I'd really like to not have to revisit those things, especially since in many cases we have no real evidence, only suspicions and rumors. And I think we should not have open-ended back history revision. I don't think we should have any, but certainly not open-ended ones. Okay, that was a speech against. Where are we on time? 
Uh, we have one minute remaining for and 19 seconds remaining against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in? No, a motion to amend. That is not in order. Sorry. It is not in order because while we allow amendments to amendments when the original one was by substitution, amendments to amendments to amendments are never in order. Sorry. No, it, there's no reason to, I, that was not meant as a joke. It was a statement of fact. Um, is there a speech in favor? Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? Well, I like the intent of this thing by saying that the business meeting by a three quarters vote can declare something that may not have really happened happen. I don't think we should allow that because then who knows who shows up in a business meeting and decides that Isaac Asimov didn't win a Hugo or whatever. We're out of time. Hold on. I, I understand. I, I am taking the member's speech because he was trying to be brief as being specifically about the amendment and not about the idea of doing that in general. I understand the issue, but I believe that was just caused by the necessary brevity. So it was germane. Okay. Time for debate against has elapsed. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. The item before us is the amendment to the amendment by substitution, which would change it from should have been a finalist on the previous year's ballot to should have been a finalist on a previous year's ballot. So should the amendment be adopted, it would change the to a. Are we clear on what we are voting on? Okay. All those in favor of the amendment, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, and the amendment does not pass. And so we are back to the amendment by substitution as not as, as originally proposed. Time for debate has elapsed. Is there anyone wishing to make a privileged motion or an yes? Okay, you can make the amendment. It will not be debatable as time for debate has elapsed. Andrew Adams, which chairperson, I have in the past been the person on the um, Hugo News. <clears throat> Name. Andrew Adams. He, no. um, I have in the past been the person where the amendment. State your amendment. Okay, okay amendment. Okay, um, I will say members are allowed to give like a brief couple sentences to explain like the purpose of the amendment. So since like half a sentence had elapsed, it, it's allowed. I have been the person checking whether somebody wishes to be a finalist. This does not do so. I would like to uh, amend somewhere appropriate with their permission. Okay, so the amendment would be to add, uh, with their permission, I would say after the status of being a finalist. Yeah, that works. By such a vote, with their permission, give them give that potential nominee the status of being a finalist. Does that meet your okay? That is so. What is before us is an amendment to the amendment by substitution to insert with their permission, so that it would read um, by and by such a vote, with their permission, give that potential nominee the status of nominee the status of being a finalist for that previous year. There is a second. Debate time has elapsed. Is there anyone wishing to make a privileged motion? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? Okay, and the amendment passes. We are going to give the secretary a moment. Yeah, and by such a vote, with their permission. Okay, so we are now going to vote on the amendment by substitution as amended. Yes? We have another motion to amend. Thank you, 
Economics Chairperson, Kendall Bolden, he, him. Um, I'm sorry, I have to turn around to look at it. Um, I move to amend to change on the previous year's ballot to on the previous two years' ballot. Uh, and I can explain if it's not obvious why I'm so Okay. Um, so the amendment is to change the previous year's ballot to the previous <coughs> two years' ballot. Is there a second? Hearing none, the amendment is not before us. And we are back to the amendment by substitution. Is there anyone else? Okay, we are going to move to a vote on the amendment by substitution as amended to include the permission clause. So this is the, this, sorry, this is the motion to adopt the amendment by substitution. This is, this is the motion to adopt the amendment by substitution, which is the constitutional amendment. Should you adopt this, should you adopt the amendment by substitution, we will then vote on adopting the amendment. So we still have to do that. Should we adopt the amendment, or sorry, adopt, sorry, adopt the constitutional amendment. There we go. Then we will have a vote on the resolution that belongs to this as well, which by a three quarters vote, if, if it passes, would then take effect should this constitutional amendment be ratified. Is that clear? Okay, so we're going to vote on the amendment by substitution. All those in favor, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, and the amendment by substitution passes. The item now before us is the underlying constitutional amendment, which didn't exist before but now does, that is the text on the screen. While the secretary is doing that, is there anyone who feels that we need to add debate time because there hasn't been substantive debate? You've is that a yes to my question or? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna wait for the secretary to catch up. Okay, I do, I mean, I agree with you. I was wanting to see if there was a sense that we needed to have the debate, okay. So given that there has not really been substantive debate against this item, there's been very limited debate for, we're, but there has been one, so we are going to add two minutes of debate time for our standing rules for speeches against this constitutional amendment and it would also be germane getting into the specifics of individual items in the resolution would not be germane so it's really just about the constitutional amendment right now to be clear okay is there anyone wishing to speak against Mixed chairperson, my name is Kent Bloom, and again, I do not approve of revisionist history, and I do not approve with interfering with the actions which we irrevocably delegate first to the Worldcon committee and not reserved to this body, and second, which the Worldcon committees consistently delegate to a subcommittee, which is the, the organization. Uh, the collection of people who deserve, determines who's a finalist. I do not think it is appropriate for us to determine who, who is or is not a finalist in any particular Hugo Award. Uh, and I, I think we need to respect the boundaries between the Worldcon, which is an independent organization to which we have delegated almost all of our authority, and the business meeting. Is there anybody else wishing to speak against? How much time is remaining? We have one minute and six seconds. Uh, Bull Avrockney, uh, Ms. Mix, Mix Chairperson, I just simply do not believe that it does anyone any good to create a second 
pathway to becoming a Hugo finalist. It, this can be used to come to uh, con confirm this status on people who have no business being Hugo finalists. Uh, it doesn't fix the mistake. It just creates an avenue for future mistakes. Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? We have 30 seconds remaining. Linda Robinette, she, her, I agree with the revisionist history. I am not a literature or drama court critic or game critic. Where would I, as a, a business meeting attendee, <coughs> have any right to add a name to the finalists? Okay. Speech against, because only speeches against are in order right now. One moment. Okay, what is an inquiry? Would it be appropriate to motion to amend? Would it be in order to approve the Luda? Would a motion to amend be in order? Right. Yes. Then I, would motion to amend. I have not recognized you. I'm sorry. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? No, oh, I'm sorry, I recognize, are you okay with, I recognize Joshua, I'm sorry, it wasn't clear. Yeah, okay. I apologize also. Um, Joshua Cronenvilles, he, him. Um, I move to um, amend uh, requiring um, a extra year of ratification. Okay, so the, is there a second? Okay, hey, hearing none, the amendment is not before us. So I believe, or do you have any time left? I believe that's the holy last thing. We, yeah, we have nine seconds. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay. I don't know if the language is permitted, but we don't fuck around with the Constitution. Oh, I didn't like for this specific reason. Time. This is not the chair who's going to call somebody out of order for using that word. Sorry. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay. Time against has elapsed. Are you you're wishing to make an amendment? Are you are you wishing to be recognized? Yes. Yes. Please state your amendment. Come to the microphone. So that is in order. Jason Spitzer, he, him. I realize this may not be debatable due to time having elapsed, but I would motion to amend, having heard arguments on both sides. Instead of trying to set a new policy. Please state the text of your amendment. Uh, then I'm going to need a lot of help because I, I can't read that and I can read this up this if it hasn't been changed, but I'm, I'm kind of lost. What are you trying to accomplish? But that's, what, that's what I was going to say. Instead of setting a new policy that would say any business meeting can go back retroactively, we could amend this. I would need help with the language, but to do this one time. There was a major issue. We acknowledge that. Okay. No, no finger pointing, but why don't we move to... So I want to be clear. So you are wishing to make an amendment that makes this new part of the Constitution only be in effect for a resolution adopted at the 2024 business <coughs> meeting? Uh, I, yeah. I would, I would, well, 24, 25 has to be ratified, okay. but I would, I would suggest it might then not be in the Constitution, right? That, that's, I need to know, I am trying to understand yes. the intention of your amendment so that I can find out if there is a second so that we can figure out if we need to workshop the language. So, Understood. the intention of your amendment is to change it so that so it is only resolutions adopted at the 2024 or 2025 business meeting that would have this power and then the ability would go away. Is that your intention? Essentially, yes, it would be to affect the final- Is that your intention? I, yes. Okay. Uh, fine. 
it, it, yes, no is okay, yes. but essentially isn't. I, I, I understand. And yes, but I, all I'm trying to clarify to make sure we're on the same page is that my goal would be to adjust the list if we do so for the 2023 finalists, and that's all. So it seems like yes. Okay. Just, I just want to make sure we're on the same page because again, I'm kind of lost. Thank right you. Now. Yes. Okay. Right, thank you. So that is your intention, and you would the it would even. The member is clarifying that even though the 25 business meeting would have power to have resolutions, it would only be for 23 finalists. Yes. Okay. Yes. Is there a second for this amendment? Yes. Second. Okay. There is a second. So. I'm aware that we need wording. I'm aware. There is a point of order or possibly inquiry. Please come to the microphone and state it. So she, her, um, I, point of order or inquiry being that I am not sure if uh, potentially the amendment that is being um, proposed by uh, the person here is necessary because I believe we are currently voting on whether to have an amendment and then if we decide to not have an amendment we are still talking about whether or not to do this for this year. So if we decide to not amend the constitution yes. we just vote against we just vote against on this and then we're still talking about just this No, year. so the the amendment by substitution was adopted. So the original resolution make them finalists has gone away because the amendment by substitution was adopted so what is now before us is whether we will adopt that amendment to the constitution so if the amendment to adopt the con sorry if the amendment to the constitution is not adopted there is not an additional thing that does something similar currently before us that, that was very unclear. I'm sorry. No, that, that is exactly why a parliamentary inquiry exists. Thank you for asking. I'm sure you were not the only person unclear. Like, this is confusing. So, the amendment by substitution was adopted. The question currently before us is whether to adopt the amendment to the Constitution the new constitutional amendment. So the underlying resolution that was originally submitted is not there anymore. Okay. Give us two minutes to confer one moment. what to do this. I have a thing that I've been meaning to say since this morning and I just keep forgetting, which is that today's coffee service was provided by Kevin Sani and we are very appreciative for it. Hold on, hold on. 
What were you asking? Could we do the bio break now all those two? Yeah. Um, I, I would just I was really hoping we were gonna get this finished before then. Okay. Yeah, we're in recess for ten minutes. Ten minutes exactly. You are gonna be back here at two oh seven. We are back from recess. If you have text on the screen of the amendment, which will be to add at the end, provided further that the authority under this section shall only be authorized to resolutions adopted by the 2024 business meeting. We are out of debate time. So we are going to move, so I'm going to summarize what's happening, but then we're going to move to a vote. So, the amendment by substitution to D.14 from Mr. Eastlake was adopted. So the original D.14 no longer, are we okay? Sorry. No, I just want to make sure everyone's okay. I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. The original D.14 no longer exists. And the item before us is the amendment by substitution, or sorry, the, the constitutional amendment for Mr. Eastlake. There has been an amendment offered to that constitutional amendment, which is to add the text on the screen to the end of it. Once we have determined whether we are adopting the new constitutional amendment proposed by Donald Eastlake. At that time, should it pass, that's when votes on resolutions will happen. But first, we need to determine if we are amending that constitutional amendment. Do you have a question? Uh, so technical question. Is, is it correct to say adopting the amendment posted by Donald Eastlake given it's about two years of we are doing the thing that adopting a new constitutional amendment at a meeting always means, which is the first year. Yes. Okay, we are getting reports that the stream is not receiving video. Okay, you're sorry. I can Okay. We're going to work on the live stream issues. I'm going to say that given that, okay, we're, we're good. Okay. So. The item before us is the amendment to the constitutional amendment proposed by Donald Eastlake, which is to add the text on the screen to the end of the amendment. Are we clear on what the item before us is? Okay. All those in favor of the amendment, raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? I'm going to say the amendment did not pass. There's been a call for a division. Per our standing rules, it takes a request of 10% of the body for a division. So, look, if, if I'm unclear on whether this is 10%, we'll move to the division, but if only two people raise their hands, we're not, basically, okay. If you are in favor of a standing counted vote, please raise the hand. Okay, I'm gonna say that's enough. And we are going to move to division. Off, and the floor manager will help you do that and make sure that we're counting correctly, and then we'll move to the votes again. So, all those in favor of the amendment, please rise. Okay, is there anyone else? Okay. 
All those in opposed, please rise.
business meeting staff created some new rules that were going to allow us to figure out which things we wanted to postpone indefinitely or object to consideration to hopefully determine the size of the stack before us in a more expedient manner than we are normally able to do so. Those are the rules that are listed on page six and seven of the agenda. That is the item that would now be before us. In order to make things move quicker, I do have a couple changes to those rules that I was going to ask unanimous consent for. I will now hear the member wishing to reorder the agenda. I will note that I am allowing this because taking a item out of order is not in order when we are in the first pass. We are not yet in it, and I am trying to not steamroll the body. Okay. So. The rules of the first pass, because I still have yet to be given a better name for it, are that what will not be in order is debate on the main motion, amendments, taking up out of order, and postponing until a definite time. What I would like to ask unanimous, because the preliminary business meeting, which we are no longer in, cannot refer things to committee unless it reports back to another main business meeting. We are no longer in the preliminary business meeting, which is when we thought this was going to happen. Given that, I would like to ask unanimous consent of the body to allow the motion to refer to committee to report back next year, not to a committee of the whole during this first pass, but just to refer to committee to report back next year. Is there unanimous consent of the body to allow for that rule change? Yeah. Okay, I don't hear any objections. Further, I would like to ask unanimous consent of the body that any motion to refer to committee, as well as the motion to postpone indefinitely, be given a debate time of two minutes by default. Our standing rules normally allow four minutes for postpone indefinitely, so I'm suggesting that we change that to two and that also that is what would be assigned to the motion to refer to committee. Is there any objection to that default debate time? Okay, hearing none, we are going to start moving through the first pass. So, this does not affect business passed on because we can't do most of these things to those. So, the first new constitutional amendment is F.1 missing in action on page 28. Is there anyone wishing to make a motion about this amendment? Yeah. So to be clear, the motions that we would be expecting to hear would be a motion to postpone indefinitely, an object to consideration, to refer to a committee to report back next year. There are other things that would be allowed, but those are sort of the big three we're expecting. Is there anyone wishing to make a motion? Okay, hearing none, we're going to move to F.2 the way we were. Is there anyone wishing to make a motion about this item? Okay. Hearing none, we're going to move on to F.3, acquired license agreement. Is there anyone wishing to make a motion? Okay. F.4, MPC procedures. Is there anyone wishing to make a motion? A motion to amend is not in order. F.5, transparency and Hugo administration. Is there anyone wishing to make a motion? Um, I'm going to recognize Joe Walcott. He, him, moved to pass, to move to send this to the uh, Hugo Process Committee. Okay. The motion has been made by Lou Walkoff to refer this to the Hugo Process Committee. This is assigned a bit debate time of two minutes by default. I will, and it has been seconded, I will remind people, this is, I want to be clear, this is not a commentary on the specific referral. This is a reminder I meant to give you a little bit ago. You don't always have to use the debate time. Is there, do you wish to speak in favor of the motion to refer, or do you believe it speaks for itself? I just feel that this is better. You do need a microphone if you're making a speech. 
We've got any number of amendments, some of which contradict each other uh, re regarding, uh, basically in reaction to Chengdu, uh, it's better to con consider them as a whole slowly and rationally than to go through, than to uh, jump on, on and do them uh, today or this, at this business meeting or tomorrow's or Sunday or Monday. Thank you. Is there anyone wishing to speak against the referral to committee? Which committee? It would be to the Hugo Process Study Committee that was created. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of referring F.5, Transparency and Hugo Administration, to the Hugo Award Process Committee that was created to report back next year, please raise the hand. Thank you, all those opposed. And the motion has been referred. Our next item is F.6. Okay, one moment. Okay, the next item is F.6, Independent Hugo Administration. Is there anyone, okay, what what kind of motion do you wish to make? I'd like to move it, be referred to the Hugo Committee. Okay, it has been referred to be moved to the Hugo Award Process Committee, okay. which has been seconded. Do you wish to speak to the motion? I think it speaks for itself. Okay, is there anyone wishing to speak against? The motion to refer to the Hugo Process Study Committee. I've given it like three different names, but I trust the secretary to call it the right thing. You wish to speak against? Yes. Okay. Give the secretary a moment. Dave Wallace, he, him. Uh, I oppose the move to refer to committee because I think we should postpone it indefinitely instead. And, uh, you would need to do that if it failed, then there was a motion to postpone it indefinitely. Fair enough. Okay. That was a speech against. Is there a speech in favor? He, him. Um, uh, this uh, creating a WISPA um, and thereby insulating from the host country is the only way to guarantee uh, that uh, the host country. No, this is still true. Right. Um, the, uh, the only way to guarantee the host country. This is debating the motion. What? Point of order. This is debating the motion, not the move. Yeah, because the, the item before. Yes, because the item before us is. Well, the debate on postponed indefinitely can go into the merits of the motion. The debate on a referral to committee needs to be about whether or not to refer it to committee, not the merits of the main motion. However, I do understand the speaker is in part responding to the intention stated by the other speaker to move to postpone indefinitely. And so, so long as the speaker keeps their comments quite narrow, I will consider it to be germane. This is a good idea but we need to send it to a committee to work on it first. Thank you. That was a speech in favor of referral to committee. Is there any? We have plenty of time, we have 46 seconds. <laughs> Is there anyone else wishing to speak against the motion to refer to committee? Seeing none, is there? Are you wanting to speak against? Against. Okay. I'm against this because the Hugo Committee already has more than enough to do, and this is very, very complicated. 
Okay, that was a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? I'm actually the maker of the underlying motion. Um, I'm fine with it going to committee. I would rather that we had passed it this year, but, and I think it's a good idea, but I'd rather have it discussed than just kill dead. That was a speech in favor. Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? So, were you wanting to speak against? Or? Yes, please. Okay. How much time is remaining? Oh, we have 37 seconds against. Okay. I really, really want this killed. The labeling is wrong. The Mark Protection Committee doesn't need it. So referring to, me, to committee will not allow us to kill it completely. Okay. Okay. That was a speech against. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor of referral? How much time is remaining on the pro side? 27 seconds. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Chairperson uh, Kendall Golden, he, him. Uh, I just wanted to point out that the remit of the committee earlier seems to cover exactly this in independent Hugo administration. So it makes total sense to refer. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? Is there anybody else wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none, once the secretary is ready, we will move to a vote. of referring F.6 to the Hugo Process Study Committee, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? And the motion passes and F.6 is referred to the Hugo Process Study Committee to report back next year. The next item before us is F.7, no illegal exclusions found on page 38. What kind of motion do you wish to make? Uh, motion to refer. Motion to refer to what committee? Uh, Hugo committee and the I specifically uh, Hugo committee and Mitch Chair. I would like to move to refer 7, 8, 9, 19, and 20 to that committee. I'm going to rule that out of order for the rationale that, like I said in the agenda, I cannot think of every possibility, but things that are likely to ensnare the committee, I'm going to rule out of order. I understand that the intention was not to be dilatory. However, it is my experience that when we attempt to do things like this, we spend far longer spending time on, well, I want to move these two, but not these three, and I want to move these four, but not this one. And so I am going to rule that out of order. Do you still wish to refer F.7 to the Hugo Process Study Committee? Yes. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, do you wish to speak to it? No. Is there anybody who wishes to speak against? Is there anybody who wishes to speak in favor? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. If you are in favor of referring F.7 to the Hugo Process Study Committee, please raise the hand. And those against? Thank you, and the motion passes. F.7 is referred to the Hugo Process Study Committee to report back next year. The next item is F.8. I'm going to refer to the uh, State Committee. Okay, motion has been made to refer to the Hugo Process Study Committee. Is there a second? Second. Do you wish to speak to it? No. Does anybody wish to speak against? Does anybody else wish to speak in favor? We will move to a vote. All those in favor of referring F.8 to the Hugo Process Study Committee to report back next year, raise my hand. Thank you. Those against? Thank you, and it is referred.
I just want to thank everyone for giving the secretary grace for using a computer that is not hers and an operating system that she is not used to. Yes, the, the secretary for time, correct. Are we good to move on or? Okay, so the next item before us is F.9. I'm going to recognize Joshua. Uh, sure, I'll move it. I move that we refer this to the Okay, it is moved and seconded to refer to the Hugo Process Study Committee. Do you wish to speak to it? Nope. Is there anybody wishing to speak against? Okay. Right, but I recognize the one over here. <laughs> yes. Chris Rose, Ethan, Mr. Chairman. I wish to speak against it because I'd like to object to consideration of this one rather than refer it to committee. Okay. That was a speech against. Is there a speech in favor? Well, no, but. Okay. Yeah, it's technically you're not allowed to object because. Is there an objection to suspending the rules to allow the member to object to consideration on the underlying motion right now? Hearing none, there is an object to consideration. This requires by our standing rule the three-quarter vote. It is not debatable and it is not amendable. An object to consideration immediately kills the item before us. All those in favor um, of rejecting the consideration F.9, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? That was not a three quarters vote and it does not pass. So I'm going to say we're back to the motion to refer. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone wishing to speak against? So we will move to a vote. All those in favor of referring to the Hugo Process Study Committee, F.9, to the Hugo Process Study Committee to report that next year, raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? And the motion passes. We can so we can refer things to committees even if it was not in the committee's original remit. Okay. Okay. So the next item before us is F.10. Is there anyone wishing to make a motion? Point of information. There's a request for information. Please bring the microphone. Lou Walkoff, he, him. I'd like to know if it's possible to send part of a motion to the committee. <laughs> that the parliamentary inquiry is if it is possible to send part of a motion to committee. It is not unless the question is divided. Kate Secor, do you wish to make a motion? I move to divide the question. Uh, I have provided the division to the table ahead of time, so I'm hoping there's a slide for it. Okay. It, there is. It's yes. on. Yes. Okay. Um, so I'd like to divide into four pieces. Uh, one that creates the software advisory committee. Uh, one that defines when the Worldcom committee becomes active. One that creates the Hugo oversight committee. And one that creates the bid committee licensing agreement. The sub bullets here tell you which part of the original motion would be included in each division. Sorry, it's a complicated motion doing a lot of stuff, so. Second. There is a second. One moment, because the secretary needs to like copy and paste some things. <laughs> I'm checking something that I forgot. Motion to divide is not debatable, though it is amendable, just so we're aware. Depends on how you slice it. I will say that while the motion to amend in any of its forms is 
not in order. No, but I have a motion to amend that did not order any So yeah, I'm going to say that we're just going that the motion to amend the division is not going to be in order per the rules of the birth path. Just so that we're clear on that. Yes. Point of information is the maker of the original motion. I sent language earlier if I was speaking to it. The software advisory committee I would amend the junk. Right. Yeah. Language. So I'm sorry. This is debate, and unfortunately, the call the the motion to divide is not debatable. I'm sorry. Point of it. Can that come up then once they're divided in the question on that section? Comes so the parliamentary inquiry is if different things can come up once the question is divided. So yes, we were, we we're going to divide the question and then we will see if there are any things that people want to do to the divided questions. During the first pass, the motion to amend is not in order. However, if somebody wants to postpone it indefinitely or refer it, it would be in order to say, I don't want to postpone or refer because I have an amendment I want to offer. Okay, so the motion before us is the motion to divide F.10 as shown on the screen. Are we clear on what that division would be? Okay. Yes. Please go to the microphone. Uh, Dashoff, if we approve the division, we then immediately go into discussion on the four parts? There is no discussion on the merit of the motion um, in order during the first pass. We would then go into each of the divisions the same way that we have been addressing everything else in the first pass to see if there are any motions that people wish to make that are in order. That is what I meant. Like, is sorry, that, I'm sorry for the... Okay. Is that clear to everyone else? Okay. So, if the motion is divided, we will then treat this as four separate things that we will then do the first pass to. Okay. All those in favor of dividing the question, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, thank you. And the motion is divided. So, we are going to first take up F.10.A, which is section, the, the new section 1.9 and the new clause in 4615 in the original F.10. So it's the stuff about the software advisory committee. Is there anyone wishing to make a motion? What kind of motion do you wish to make? To postpone indefinitely. Okay. The motion to postpone indefinitely has been moved and seconded. This gets two minutes of automatic debate time. Do you wish to speak to it? Okay. And as a reminder, the motion to postpone indefinitely will require a two-thirds vote. Debate can go into the merits of the underlying motion. And if it is postponed indefinitely, it essentially goes away. Is there anyone wishing to speak against the motion to postpone indefinitely? Yes. Randall Shepard, he, him, the mixed chairperson. Uh, I have an amendment I want to make to it. I've sent to the business meeting earlier the language uh, in discussion with a key member who I'd want on the, that advisory committee. Uh, I've opted that the simpler solution is to require open source software so we don't run into a situation where we have a Hugo administrator using private, untestable software. That should be testable by anyone in the community because that's the open software language. I sent a business meeting app. Right, we so have I, it if it does get, if the amendment does okay, get. Well, I'd like that amendment so that I'm opposed to it. Right. Indefinitely. Okay, that was a speech against. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the motion to postpone indefinitely? Please silence any devices. Her, well, I am in sympathy with the desire to use open source software. I think that this specific motion is not right, and I don't want us to take it up on the basis that we might be able to pass an amendment 
when we've got people who want to be here and can't all the time, if the maker of that amendment doesn't show up, we're just going to wind up trying to fill this off later. Let's just tell it now and we can move a new open source thing later. That was a speech okay. in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay. Okay. Oh, we have 26 seconds remaining against. Jack Boyd, he, him. Uh, I believe the technology selection uh, is a complex problem that will require institutional expertise, and there needs to be a place for that in the society. That was a speech against. Is there anybody else wishing to speak in favor of postponing indefinitely? Is there anybody else wishing to speak against? Were you wanting to or are you good? Okay. Seeing no more speakers, we'll move to a vote on postponing F.10.A, which is the software advisory, advisory pieces, we need to postpone that indefinitely. All those in favor, please raise the hand. Thank you, all those against? That is not a two-thirds majority. I did count, y'all. Um, so it does not pass, and it is not postponed indefinitely. Is there any other motion related to F.10.A that somebody wishes to make? So just really quickly, amend is in an order, just so that you're aware. <laughs> okay, the motion has been, which committee? Uh, the same committee, all the other ones. The the committee. Okay. The motion has been made to refer to the Google Word Process Study Committee. Is there a second with the clarification of the committee? Second. It has been seconded. Do you wish to speak to it? I think it's speaking. Okay. Is there anybody wishing to speak against? I'm going to recognize Chris Rose. Chris Rose, he, him, uh, Emmett Sherperson, uh, this is me. I'm the current author of the active Hugo software that's being used today and the, for the sub subsequent few years. I'm also the author of the amendment that Randall proposed. Uh, I don't think referring it to the committee is going to help. I think we can deal with it in this business meeting and clarify it according to the requirements that I think I've set forth there. Okay, that was a motion, or a motion, a speech against referring to committee. Is there a speech in favor? Is there anybody else wishing to speak against? Ron Oaks, he, him. Like Chris, I have also written uh, Hugo Award database and software that was used for five world cams over the last 15, 20 years. And this is not a Hugo Award problem. This is a technical problem, a computer problem. <laughs> it needs to be discussed either here or killed here and then handed off to technically competent people to be discussed. It is not the same as the Hugo Award Ten problems. That was a speech against referral to committee. Is there anybody else wishing to speak in favor? There are 10 seconds remaining. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Marianne. Marianne, 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 Marianne,
If you wish to make a motion, that is in order. No, because I'm okay. not sure how it would go. So. Okay. <laughs> it's still not in order to amend. We have to wait till we get through the first pass. Are you aware? Yeah. Do you still want to do it? Sorry, that was Representative Randy. Oh. You still? <laughs> Kind of just wait at me when it's time to admit. Okay, it'll be, like, <laughs> it'll be tomorrow, if not Monday. Um, okay, we're gonna, we got, we got 13 minutes left. Okay, we are now on F10B, which is the item related, the amendment to section 2.1, defining the World Comp Committee become active. Yes. Do you wish to make a motion? I do. Mr. Chair, I wish to postpone F10B in the moment. Okay. Second. It's been moved and seconded to postpone F10B indefinitely. Is the secretary? Yep. leaves a big hole between when one when your WISPAS membership ends at the end and when the next one picks up and I just don't think that's a great idea. I think we should have it be like a smooth rollover like we have right now. That was a motion in favor of postponing the death or a speech in favor of postponing the definitely. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Is there anybody else wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none we will move to a vote. All those in favor of postponing F10B indefinitely, raise the hand. Thank you. Those against, the motion passes, and F10B is postponed indefinitely. We are now going to move to F10C, which is, do you need a moment? F10C is the amendments to Article 3, including the new section that is about the Hugo Oversight Committee. Anyone wishing to make a motion? Okay, what kind of motion? Okay. It has been moved and seconded to refer by Perry M to uh, refer F10C to the Hugo Work Process Study Committee. Do you wish to speak to it? Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none, we will move to a vote. All those in favor of referring F10C, raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? And the motion is referred. The next item before us is F10D, which is the new clause 4614, which is a bid committee licensing agreement. The secretary. Okay. Is there anyone wishing to make a motion about? Okay. What kind of motion do you wish to make? Okay, Mr. <coughs> Eastlake has moved to postpone indefinitely, and there is a second. So you can speak. Mr. Eastlake. Do you wish to speak to it? Okay, then do that. Uh, <clears throat> no, it's like the, uh, this uh, section 4.6.1 here uh, is entirely redundant with F.3, which we've already passed and decided to keep in. Both uh, have the effect of requiring a license agreement for uh, World Time bidders at World Time. I just want to clarify that for the body that when he said that we have passed F.3, he means that we haven't killed it. Oh, yeah, yeah, first pass. <laughs> we, we didn't kill it. <laughs> yeah, okay. That was a speech in favor of postponing indefinitely. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Seeing none, we'll move to a vote. As a reminder, this is a two-thirds vote. All those in favor of postponing F10D and indefinitely raise the hand. Thank you, all those against. And the motion passes and F10D is postponed indefinitely. We are now going to move to F11, Hugo Administration and Site Selection Monitoring on page 40. Yes. Is it appropriate to refer a single motion to two different committees? No, it is not in order to refer a single motion to two different committees unless the motion is divided. I got it. 
Is the secretary ready for us to continue? Okay. The item before us is F.11, New Administration and Site Selection Monitoring on page 43. Kate Secor wishes to make a motion, and I will recognize her. Mr. Chair, I wish to move to divide F.11 into two pieces. Uh, one to cover the Cuba subcommittee delegation mandate and one to cover the new Cuba administration and site selection monitoring committee. Second. Okay, the motion to divide has been moved and seconded. So it is to divide the question into two parts. The first one would be the first chunk of text, which is 3.13, and the second would be the second chunk of text. Um, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So the motion to divide, we've decided it's neither debatable nor amendable. Yeah. Okay, hold on. What is your item? Okay, so. Okay, one moment. So first of all, we have a request to divide it differently. That would be an amendment and not be in order. We have a point of order that these are entangled and cannot be divided. Give me a moment to refresh myself on what all this has. Okay, so I agree with the motion that these are entangled. The language in the um, second paragraph of the new F.X is talking about, so basically this, the Hugo Administration and Site Selection Monitoring does things about the required Worldcon Committee Hugo Award Subcommittee and it is 3.13 that makes that a required subcommittee as opposed to an option like it currently is. So these are entangled and cannot be divided. So the motion to divide is not in order. And I'm gonna guess that other motions to divide probably aren't in order as well, but if you want to try, we can. Okay, come to the microphone and let me know how you wish to divide it. I wish to divide it by separating the site selection piece from the Hugo piece. I do not believe that is possible given the phrasing of the motion. It would require it to be rewritten. Okay. What motion do you wish to make? Okay. Kent Bloom has moved to postpone indefinitely. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Do you wish to? Kent Bloom, do you wish to speak to it? Mixed chairperson, my name is Kent Bloom, and I really think Please that this is. Mic. I really think that this is much too complex for us to deal with uh, as a body, and I don't want to be a committee of the whole, or in fact, to even refer it to a committee to report back on Monday. So I think we should simply wait till next year. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Is there a speech against? Okay, Mr. Adams. <coughs> Under Adam C. Hill, Mr. Person, I, well, I am sympathetic to the previous speaker. I believe we do need to have this discussion. Um, I was planning to uh, propose we go into a quasi commission in the whole to have that discussion. I do not believe we are yet at the point of making a decision on this, but I do believe we need to have an initial discussion. Okay, that was a speech against postponing indefinitely. Is there anybody else wishing to speak in favor? Is there anybody else wishing? Sorry. Was that a hand? Yes. You do wish to speak in favor? Okay. Ron O.C. Him. I will note the makers of this proposal. 
is the Mark Protection Committee, who, we, who this body selects in expecting their wisdom and knowledge to craft and understand things. And so I believe they have made their best effort to at least make an initial proposal they believe will work and help resolve some of the issues that have come up, especially over the last year. And we should allow them allow them to present their arguments and we should hear it and discuss it and not just throw this in the trash can. Thank you. Okay, so I believe that was a speech against postponing the death penalty. Yeah. Okay. Is there any wishing to speak in favor? Okay. Um, given that the member is author was recognized to speak in favor and so kind of possibly <coughs> jumped the line on other people speaking against. Is there anybody else wishing to speak against? Okay, seeing none, we will move to a vote. Okay. All those in favor of postponing F.11 indefinitely, please raise the hand. Thank you, those opposed? And it is not postponed indefinitely. Is there any other motion that somebody wishes to make about F.11? What motion do you wish to make? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, refer to, to the Hugo Process Committee. Is there a second? Second. It has been moved by Lou Walcott and seconded to refer to the Hugo Process Study Committee. Do you wish to speak to it? You don't have to. Do you wish to? I think it goes along with everything we've done so far in terms of the other Okay, that's a speech, but I will restate it. said that it goes along with everything else we've done so far. Is there anyone wishing to speak against referring to committee? Mary Ann. Harry and Laurie Sheher, since this also involves site selection, it is not appropriate to refer to the Hugo Awards Process Committee. Okay, that is a speech against. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone else wishing to speak against? Okay, well, you're wishing to speak against? Okay. Dave Wallace, he, him. I am just seconding the previous comments that uh, we should hear from the Mark Protection Committee, and we can always decide to refer to a committee after we have had some discussion, but I think that initial discussion is important. Okay, that is, so that was a speech against. Is there anybody else wishing to speak in favor? Anybody else? Request for information. Request for information is 3 p.m. Yeah. We're gonna deal with that after we deal with this, but I gotta at least get this thing done. Okay. Um, is there anybody else wishing to speak in favor of the referral to committee? Okay, we're gonna move to a vote. All those in favor of referring to the Hugo Process Study Committee, please raise the hand. Thank you, all those against, and it is not referred. I'm gonna say that we've exhausted the things we can do to F11 and that we're done with that one. It is 3 p.m. I also saw a hotel person poking their head out of the door, so I think that they need in the room. We are adjourned and we will continue with finishing the first pass tomorrow because we do need to figure out what is before us before we can like tackle it. So we will see you all at 10 a.m. tomorrow when we're going to do site selection first, actually, and then some balloting, and then maybe get some stuff done. <laughs>